the president and the co-founder of RSI's parent organization, the Center for Excellence in Education, Ms. Joanne DiGennaro, or as we always fondly call her, Ms. D. In 1983, Ms. D founded CEE with the late Admiral H.G. Rickover, the legendary father of America's nuclear navy. She received her Bachelor of Science degree from Purdue University and her Master's from the University of Maryland. She read the law at Oxford University and received her Doctor of Law degree from George Mason University. Ms. D is an internationally known champion of STEM education. She has been a driving force in the creation of science programs in over 50 countries. President George W. Bush appointed her to the Army, the U.S. Com Army War College Board of Trustees, and she was also appointed to the board of NASA. In 2012, Ms. D was named by U.S. News and STEM Connector as one of the top U.S. women leaders in STEM. Harvard University's Program for Information Policy Studies in 2005. Science literacy, essential for decision making. I think we all can say that that's very important. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming our very own Ms. D. At dinner, I was just saying, can you believe this is 36 years? And each year, it, it is just ex as exciting for me as the first year. Um, this past weekend, my husband joined a group of Rick from 1984 target shooting in Utah. Um, it's strange, really. They're in their 50s. But I said, don't go any further than that. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so welcome, students. My presentation is one that is given every year since the mid-80s, and some of the faculty have heard it, they can just doze off for a little while. But each time I look at it and say, you know, I need to write something else, I go, no, I really like it. It's been published, and it says everything that I want to say to you all, as long as you all stay up. I don't want to see anyone sleeping. And we'll try to get this over as quickly as we can so you can get out of your zoot suits, relax, and meet your fellow classmates. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Center for Excellence in Education, I applaud you for having been chosen from among many worthy students to attend the 36th annual session of the Research Science Institute, a program to nurture high school students to careers of excellence and leadership in science, technology, engineering, and math. Today is an appropriate day to speak to you about three things. The late Admiral H.G. Rickover, the man whose vision created our organization, the Research Science Institute, which really is the Rickover Science Institute, and what it means to become a Rickoite. The Center for Excellence in Education, early known as the Admiral H.G. Rickover Foundation, was organized in 1982 when the Admiral, a Jewish immigrant from Poland, 82 years of age, retired after having served 64 years in the U.S. Navy. He was indeed the father of the U.S. nuclear-powered Navy and developer of civilian uses of nuclear power. He helped set up nuclear engineering departments at leading colleges and universities throughout the country. Indeed, he is known for helping to have the MIT Department of Nuclear Engineering become renowned for its professors and those who have worked under him. He established his own graduate program for officers in nuclear engineering and physics and wrote books on Russian, Swiss, and US education. 
Extending his interest to secondary education, Admiral Rickover wanted to establish an intensive and unique math and science environment for high school scholars at no cost to them. And at the same time, to provide a program where professors could nurture their training and skills. I assisted the Admiral to prepare the legal framework and to organize the foundation. Together, we traveled from coast to coast and to Israel and China and met with European educational experts to structure the RSI consistent with our ideas and philosophical principles for excellence. Those have not changed. Dr. Glenn Seaborg, Nobel laureate in chemistry, Dr. Julian Stanley, the founder of CTY at Johns Hopkins University, and many others helped to develop the Rickover, now the Research Science Institute. At that time, the three former presidents, Nixon, Ford, and Carter, served as trustees. President Carter remains a trustee because he is a former nuclear submariner who worked under the Admiral. CEE is also proud to have Wolfgang Ketterling as a trustee, a 2001 Nobel laureate in physics, and a member of the MIT faculty who will speak to you later during the program. And we have Dr. Fang Zheng, core member of the Broad Institute of, Math of MIT and Harvard, the developer of CRISPR on our board. The purpose of the RSI is to propel you to think of knowledge like the 4th of July as a bombardment of ideas, thinking beyond and thinking broadly. Admiral Rickover, a Renaissance man, believed that there are no great scientists who do not have an understanding of the classics, like cognitive science, theoretical physics or calculus, the creations and philosophical ideas of the ages are part of our collective heritage and human memory. We all learn from the same masters. Therefore, a humanistic component is included during your first week here, led by renowned Dr. Lance Rhodes. You are here because the center believes you have the ability to think holistically. That you know to excel means more than getting fives on APs, above a four point, perfect scores on the PSATs, the SATs, and the ACTs. That you know to excel is to feel concern for yourself, your country, and of most import, humankind. The center believes that you are ready to more fully realize that being bright means facing both the privileges and obligations society will feel entitled to place on you. To strive for excellence implies foregoing most of the pleasantries in our mediocre world. It is difficult to constantly strive for excellence, but if you are willing to accept mediocrity or to accept a job done less than at your best, your opportunity for failure are boundless. No grades are given here for performance. That would be easy. The most difficult judgments are made, however, because you judge yourself, and you will not be fooled. We have brought together some of the finest professors and staff in this country, that includes alumni of RSI, to help you use your intellectual powers to the fullest extent. And it is indeed fortunate that RSI has as its director, Dr. Amy Silman, 
of the 1984 inaugural year. You are being provided access to cutting edge opportunities, which only MIT and a few premier colleges and universities can provide. In Descartes' search for methods, he poses the following thought about a good mind. It is not enough to have a good mind. The principal thing is to apply it well. The greatest souls are as capable of the greatest vices. So those who move very slowly may advance much further if they always follow the right way than those who run but stray from it. Descartes is telling us not to deceive ourselves to believe that a little copper and a little glass is gold and diamonds. Locke, in his essay concerning human understanding, warns, as does Descartes, for patience and an understanding that great scientific achievements are shared by the unknown work of many. Locke says that many great works will have begun by chance, are continued by entreaty, written in incoherent parcels, and after long intervals of neglect, resumed again as humor or occasions permit. Darwin's contributions are perhaps the supreme example of this. Locke further stated that the commonwealth of learning is not without master builders whose mighty designs in advancing the sciences will leave lasting monuments to the admiration of posterity. But not everyone can hope to be a boil, and in an age that produced such masters as the incomparable Isaac Newton and others of that strain, ambition must sometimes be fulfilled as an underlabor in clearing the ground a little and removing some of the rubbish that lies in the way of knowledge. But along with Locke's wisdom, we must remember the dream of Robert Burns. Ah, but a person's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? Your grasp of facts has been demonstrated. You test well. You're in the 99th percentile or above in the mathematical reasoning ability. Indeed, it is recognized that some of the world's prodigies are at the RSI or are alumni of RSI. Many of you have completed college and university level work for several years. Each year, we have US Academic Olympiad team members among our alumni. And of course, we are proud of our record accomplishments in national and international competitions. In 2018, at the Regeneron Science Talent Search, formerly the Intel, four of the top 10 Regeneron Science winners were RSI alumni. In 2019, Rachel Seegers, one of your counselors, was selected as the Seaborg Award recipient at the Regeneron Science Talent Search. Congratulations again. Indeed, in the last 18 years, RSI alumni have taken the grand prizes in Intel 11 times. And 10 years ago, the Fields Medal in Math and the MacArthur Genius Award went to our Terry Tao, RSI 89, Professor of Mathematics at UCLA. He also received the coveted National Science Foundation Waterman Award. The nation's, the center's additional student program 
is the USA Biology Olympiad. Each member of Team USA has garnered a medal at the Olympiad since the first competition in 2003. Team USA achieved the coveted one, number one position in the world several times, and a Team USA member has often been named number one student of IBO in the world. I could go on and on with accolades about the honors of our program alumni, but let it suffice to say that at CEE's programs, and particularly at this RSI, you are among an august group of students. Academic scoring is, however, but epistemological in the long-term ontology of your life. The critical issue is not what you know, but what you do with what you know. The great end of life is not simply knowledge, it is action. One of my favorite thoughts concerning, concerning the eternal quest for excellence is Theodore Roosevelt's Man in the Arena. It sends chills each time I read this about what he said. It is not the critic who counts, not the one who points out how the strong person stumbles or how the doer of deeds might have done them better. The credit belongs to the individual who is actually in the arena, who is marred with sweat and dust and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasm, the great devotions, and does so in a worthy cause, who, if he or she wins, knows the triumph of high achievements, and who, if in failure, at least fails while daring greatly, so that one's place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. In simple words, you will encounter disappointments. Make certain that no one else pays the price for your pain. You are at RSI to better understand that the knowledge you have and will acquire must not remain imprisoned in your brain. There is a need to pay back what is given to you. Call it gratitude. But there is a wonderful other component of the Institute that you will experience. Synergism between and among you. Fun and friendships and the sharing of ideas and dreams with student representatives from 34 states. Top academic scholars also are with us from 14 nations, Bulgaria, Canada, China, India, Ireland, Kazakhstan, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, South Korea, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and Turkey. Our international scholars are gold, silver, or bronze medalists in international Olympiads, or they are among their nation's top achievers on respective national examinations. The center was the first organization in the United States chosen by the People's Republic of China, India, Bulgaria, and Vietnam to receive their high school students. We also were the first in the United States requested by countries in Africa to host their students. Innumerable Ricoite alumni 
and staff contribute so much time to the center's efforts and to this six weeks, which you will never forget. The Center for Excellence believes in you. We will share your joys and sorrows as you become intricately involved with a very close-knit and special family. The Ripley's <laughs> exist because of you and your predecessors. We will be involved with you for the remainder of your high school days, your undergraduate years, your graduate and professional careers. In a passage that is quoted as the motto in part three of Thus Spoke Therathustra by Friedrich Nietzsche, Therathustra asked, who among you can laugh and be elevated at the same time? I should hope that during this session of RSI, you are provided with such an opportunity to laugh and to be elevated. Good luck, work hard, do well. CEE -E is positive that the world will be a better place and benefit from your accomplishments. Thank you.